Hello everyone. In today's class, we are going to start a new topic that is UV spectroscopy. And uh, first we will see introduction of UV spectroscopy and the principle for UV spectroscopy. Let's start. Yes. If you see the electromagnetic spectrum, so the different different radiations like infrared, visible, UV, microwave, radio waves, gamma rays, X-rays, etc. These are the different different names of the uh, wavelength uh, spec uh, different wavelength spectrum. And if you see the name of the radiation is depend upon the wavelength. It is depend upon the wavelength, right? So in the electromagnetic spectrum, if we see the UV region is placed between 10 nanometer to 1400, uh, 400 nanometer. So 10 to 400 nanometer is the area where we found the wavelength of UV spectroscopy, right? In this area, if you see the 10 to 200 nanometer, which is known as far, far UV region. And sometimes we are also calling this region as vacuum region. This region as vacuum region or far UV region. Why? Because the gases like oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, so etc. Uh, this type of radiations are observed in the far UV region. It always present in the air. So we have to exclude it. So we are considering as a what we call yeah we will call them as far region or vacuum region. Now, the very important section is 200 to 400 nanometer and 400 to 200 nanometer is the area where we will found the actual UV spectroscopy which we desire. So this area is important according to view of UV spectroscopy where we will work or where will we will do the analysis, right? So this is the key area and now we are moving next Lambert law and Beer's law. So these both law are depending for the absorption. These both laws are working towards the absorption. So first we will see Lambert's law. Fraction of monochromatic light. Fraction of monochromatic light absorbed by homogeneous medium. Homogeneous medium is dependent on the intensity of incident light. What do you mean by incident light? The light we are using as a source. That, that is incidental light, right? So the fraction of mo monochromatic light absorbed by the homogeneous medium depend upon the intensity of incident light. Now, Beer's law. Absorption of monochromatic radiation by homogeneous medium is proportional to the number of absorbing molecule. If you see the absorption of monochromatic light of radiation by homogeneous medium means a medium which is homogeneous, there are no separate part, you cannot find different layers, right? So homogeneous medium is proportional to the number of absorbing molecule, means how many number of molecule, what is the concentration, because concentration is depending upon the number of absorbing molecule. So if concentration is high, then absorption will be high. If concentration is low, then absorption will be low, right? So this is the two law, Lambert's law and Beer law, which is working for the absorption phenomena. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to combine these two laws, okay? So that will be the key principle for the UV spectroscopy. 
combination of these two loads one is lambert law another is beers law so if you make the combination of this two law a formula will be generated log 10 base i0 by i equal to absorption or you can write same thing as epsilon c and l now it if you know these terms it will be easy for you if you don't know these terms okay that's fine we are going to see so what is i0 what is i0 i0 is the intensity of incident radiation intensity of incident radiation while i is the intensity of transmitted radiation what is the meaning of transmitted radiation the radiation which pass through the sample and not absorb but going to the other side that is transmitted radiation right so when incident light or incident radiation means the coming from the source and other is transmitted means not absorbed but going to the other side this ratio this ratio is known as log 10 by i by i0 and it is equal to the absorption now another term a means absorption you can also say as optical density so when you go for the uv spectrophotometer optical density will be given right on axis now the epsilon is molar absorptivity molar absorptivity and c is the concentration of solution which you are going to analyze and it is in terms of mole per liter now l is the path length in centimeter of cell sample cell right now next we are going to see the theory of electronic transition and uv absorption so all the uv spectroscopy is totally depending upon the transitions and the absorption phenomena transitions and the absorption phenomena if absorption occurs then only transition will be there if some molecule solution make absorption then the absorption will create higher energy to the molecules they will get excited and jump to the higher states right a molecule is having rotational vibrational and electronic energy levels so any molecule which possess rotational vibrational and electronic level every molecule possess these things right now each electronic level is associated means we are going to divide electronic level we will further divide with number of vibrational level so vibrational level is a small part of electronic level right and of less energy separation and each vibrational level now we are going to further divide the vibrational level into the rotational level so vibrational level is associated with a set of level of even less energy separation that is rotational levels okay and due to the large amount of energy associated with the ultraviolet radiation it is capable of electronic excitation and induce transition in electronic vibrational and rotational level if we simplify this last paragraph it shows us the transition will happen it may occur in electronic level it may occur in in vibrational level it may occur in rotational level right so it is capable to do this type of electronic excitations next if you see the diagram it will be very clear see e are electronic energy level which is the biggest one which is the biggest one if you divide it you will get some vibrational level you will get some vibrational level so vibrational level is a part of electronic level and if you see the rotational level are the part of vibrational level so rotational levels are very small and vibrational level are big and the electronic level are biggest right so electronic level possess both rotational and vibrational energy levels we are moving moving further yes electronic transitions the key role of uv spectroscopy excitation of molecule by absorption of radiation in uv region involves 
promotion of its electron from bonding and non bonding orbital to the anti bonding orbital right so some bonding orbital like sigma and pi and some non bonding orbital like n right now the transition will occur from this three to sigma star and pi star sigma star and pi star which are the anti bonding orbital sigma and pi are bonding orbital while sigma star and pi star are anti bonding orbital okay and non bonding orbitals are represented as small n so these are the term which we are going to use now energy order of transitions which transitions have higher energy which transition have lower energy so highest energy is of sigma to sigma star n to sigma star is the second one and pi to pi star is the third one and last one is n to pi star lowest energy level transition right okay next you can see whatever we seen here it may be not clear but if you see the level whenever you are going to draw a diagram of energy right in terms of orbital always sigma orbital lies at downside sigma orbital lies at downside right sigma then pi then n then if you go further that will be pi star and here it will be sigma star always keep in mind the energy of sigma energy of sigma is lower than pi pi is lower than n and the pi star is greater than n and sigma star is greater than pi star so here if you see sigma is less but sigma star is highest sigma star is highest you can see right so these things we have to keep in mind when we are writing the diagram so these are the transition now what are the transition so first we will see sigma to sigma star transition so it is a transition of an electron from bonding sig sigma orbital to the sigma star yani ki jo electron hai wo energy lenge uv radiation se and then it will jump to the sigma star lower to higher okay it is the energy transition because of sigma bonds are very strong such transition are observed in alkanes alkanes single bond this type of transition of absorption take place in high energy uv region at 150 150 right same way actually two signs are missing this will look like that and this may look like that so n to sigma star so when the electron from non bonding orbital n non bond bonding orbital n jump to the sigma star the transition will be known as n to sigma star n to sigma star and it requires comparative less energy than sigma to sigma star transitions next compound containing electrons on hetero atom like oxygen nitrogen sulfur etc right capable to show the n to sigma star right compounds like alcohol which possess oxygen ester possess oxygen halide possess halogen aldehyde possess oxygen ketone possess oxygen they are capable to show n to sigma star because oxygen or halide can show the lone pair non bonding electron which may jump to the sigma star so it is due to that now next pi to pi star transition it is transition of electron from a bonding pi orbital to an anti bonding pi star orbital means the pi electron jump to the pi star will be known as pi to pi star and it is necessary when you see this uh, type of transition the lone pair is not required 
but the double bond or multiple bond must required because pi electron always possess double and triple bonds right so this type of transition occur in the compound containing unsaturation like double bond triple bond etc you can see alkene carbonyl nitro etc can show this pi to pi star transition it requires low energy then n to sigma star transition it requires low energy then n to sigma star transition right and in conjugated alkene system it occurs at 170 to 190 nanometer in conjugated carbonyl it may occur up to 180 to 190 also right and the last n to pi star in such transition electronic uh, electron of non bonding orbital n to it will jump to the anti bonding orbital pi star orbital and this require lowest energy if you see the diagram yeah so you can see pi to pi star is the lowest energy level pi to pi star is the lowest energy level while sigma to sigma star is the highest energy level right yeah and saturated aldehyde and ketone show both saturated aldehydes and ketone means with single bond both so n2 pi star and pi 2 pi star because due to the carbonyl right transition and n2 pi star due to a uh, lower energy than the pi 2 pi star you can see from the diagram pi 2 pi star pi 2 pi star is here yeah while n2 pi star is here which is lower n2 pi star right so n2 pi star transition has lower energy than pi2 pi star transition so this is all about the transitions occurs in the uv spectroscopy so this is the basic introduction of uv spectroscopy in next class we will learn about the more details thank you for listening